On the early morning of June 23, 2019, South Carolina law enforcement received a distress call regarding gunfire on West End Avenue in Anderson County. Rushing to the scene, officers encountered a frantic 20-year-old man urgently seeking assistance on the porch. Inside the residence, they found a harrowing scene. Marcella Rice, visibly distressed, knelt beside a young girl identified as 11-year-old Janaya Scott. Scott, a fifth grade student brimming with aspirations, lay injured, prompting Rice's desperate plea to the authorities. Just weeks prior, Janiah had been eagerly anticipating her transition from Whitehall Elementary School to Robert Anderson Middle School, even penning an essay detailing her dreams for the future. She had big dreams of becoming a cosmetologist and opening her own shop. Janaya had even narrowed down her college options to three top choices, the University of South Carolina, Clemson University, or Duke University. But now, those dreams seemed distant as she lay bleeding in her mother's arms. Welcome to the Cross Crime Channel, where we analyze true crime cases from around the globe. Before we dive into today's case, remember to show your support by hitting that like button, sharing your thoughts in the comments, and subscribing to our channel. Get ready as we delve into the tragic case of Janiah Scott. It was a typical weekend night, and Janiah had stayed up late with her 18-year-old sister and 11-year-old cousin. Little did they know, danger was lurking outside their home. While they were probably just chilling on the couch watching TV, gunfire erupted, shattering their peace and safety. Janiah's mom, Marcella, was jolted awake by the terrifying sounds. A bullet pierced Janiah's shoulder, severing an artery, and she began to bleed profusely. All three girls were rushed to the hospital, but tragically, Janiah didn't make it. Despite efforts to save her, she passed away an hour later. Her sister and cousin survived their injuries, but the loss of Janiah shook the entire community. And bullets ripped through a house. Um, there is no understanding, there's no explanation, there's no answer. Now to Anderson, where police are looking for the person who shot into a home and killed an 11-year-old. During a morning news conference, the police chief asked the public for help finding the shooter. And 7 News reporter Kimberly Brown joins us live with an update on that. Kim? Diane, police in Anderson are out in full force as the investigation continues. They are looking for the person who pulled the trigger, who injured two individuals and killed an 11-year-old. While the family of Janiah Scott continues to mourn her death, police are out in the community looking for answers and suspects. This was just a very tragic, senseless incident. This morning, the city of Anderson Police Chief Jim Stewart asked the public for help in solving this case. We have got tips coming in from Crime Stoppers. Um, but we need the public's help to actually like cross that T and dot the I. Investigators say someone shot into this home on West End Avenue around 1.30 early Sunday morning, killing 11-year-old Janiah and injuring two other females, an 11-year-old and an 18-year-old. We seek the truth. Reverend James C. Clark is a part of the Community Action Committee. They're a group of ministers in Anderson who work to bridge the gap between the public and law enforcement. We work closely with the police department so that we can be a liaison back to the community. He and other community members attended today's press conference. They, along with law enforcement, hope to find the answers they need in this case. Today, the team of detectives, narcotics officers, and street crimes units are working to canvas the neighborhoods. And investigators tell us that the two survivors are still in the hospital, the 11-year-old in critical condition, the 18-year-old in stable condition. If you know anything, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers. And one note we want to tell you about, that there is a candlelight vigil on Wednesday, the 26th at 7 p.m. at 1209 West Avenue, right here in Anderson. Reporting live for 7 News, Kimberly Brown. The question on everyone's mind was, why? Why would someone target a home filled with innocent children? What could possibly motivate such a senseless and dangerous act? 
The community demanded answers, and investigators were determined to uncover the truth and bring justice for Janaya and her family. They pleaded with anyone who had information to come forward and help bring closure to this heartbreaking tragedy. At the same time, a heart-wrenching vigil was organized to honor the memory of Janaya. Described as a vibrant and ambitious young girl who adored school, singing, dancing, and the color purple. Hundreds of people gathered to offer support and solace to her grieving family. Janaya was laid to rest on July 2nd in a casket adorned with her favorite color, purple. Her funeral costs were covered by NFL player Shaq Lawson, known for his role as a defensive end for the Buffalo Bills. Moved by the tragedy and reminded of his own sister, Lawson emphasized the need for justice and urged the responsible party to step forward. During the investigation, authorities discovered that the assailants had used two weapons, a pistol and a semi-automatic rifle, firing more than 35 rounds at the house. This indicated involvement from at least two individuals. Just over a week into the investigation, a breakthrough emerged unexpectedly. A Facebook post by someone named Braxton Sticks Powell caught the attention of the police, marking a pivotal moment in the search for answers. The post read as follows. Late Saturday night on June 23rd, 2019, I killed a little girl, Janiah Scott, because someone thought it was okay to rob me for what I had, and I wanted to take what that person had. The reason I am saying this now is because I feel so guilty and can't go on like this. My prayers to her family, I am so sorry. The moment the post appeared, it was swiftly taken down, but not before someone managed to capture a screenshot of it. Shortly after, another post surfaced, adding to the intrigue. Whoever playing on my page stopped playing on my life. I did not post that, and I have nothing to do with any of that. Someone hacked my page. Just hours after the post surfaced, police made a significant arrest, apprehending 17-year-old Stephen Brandon Powell in connection to Janiah's tragic ordeal. Details about Stephen and his background remain scarce. However, a petition initiated by Andrea Powell purportedly Stephen's mother, asserts his innocence. The petition read as follows. Stephen B. Powell has the support of not only his family and friends, but his community leaders as well. All of the listed names believe in his innocence and believe he should be released on bond to show those of his opposition that he is an honest, well-functioning, and good-hearted member of society. Stephen Powell is a young teen who at the age of 17 was wrongfully accused of murder and attempted murder. Powell, who was just on the verge of starting adulthood, was taking steps to secure his future. Taking away his chance to do so would be robbing him of achieving his full potential and cheating this community of the contributions he could potentially make. Stephen Powell should be released on bond because not doing so will only add to the statistics of wrongfully accused persons in America. The stigma associated with being wrongfully accused is an attribute that is deeply discrediting and can follow someone for the rest of their life. Statistics also show that 32% of all African American men born in 2001 will experience being imprisoned at some point in their life. These facts are both alarming and disheartening. As supporters of Mr. Powell and upstanding and just American citizens, it is our civic duty to help put an end to incarcerating innocent people. Investigators revealed that Stephen had a history of trouble, suggesting this wasn't his first brush with the law. Just days prior to Janiah's tragic incident, Authorities in Welford County were actively seeking him after he allegedly discharged a firearm at an apartment, narrowly missing a young boy. And it turns out this isn't the first time he's had a run-in with law enforcement. He was also questioned and identified by police as an initial person of interest in an apartment shooting in Welford. He was cleared and never charged, but these pictures were even put up on social media when police were looking for him after a bullet went through this wall and came inches from striking a little boy. It does not surprise me that he's involved in something like this. Uh, when we interviewed him, he was very manipulative. Um, I believe
believe he knew a lot more about what was going on in our, in our case than he let on to believe. Um, and so it does not surprise me that he is involved in something like this. In July 2019, Stevens' bond hearing drew Janiah's family members eager to confront him for their loss. Janiah's mother couldn't contain her desire to face her daughter's killer. Yes, ma'am. Talk to me. Talk, talk. No, 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 ma'am. Talk to me. Talk to me. Well, you're going to have your opportunity. Stevens' hope for release were dashed as he was denied bond and remained in custody pending trial. Meanwhile, investigators persisted in their belief that another individual was involved in the tragedy. Over a year later, in a separate turn of events, 21-year-old Desmond Bruton from Spartanburg was apprehended. Facing charges, including attempted murder and possession of a weapon during a violent crime, Desmond had been detained at Spartanburg County Jail since June 3rd for an unrelated armed robbery charge. He was extradited to Anderson to face charges in Janiah's death. During his bond hearing, Desmond professed ignorance regarding the charges against him. Despite his plea, bail was denied and he was ordered to remain in custody until trial. You have a series of charges here. You're charged with murder, four counts of attempted murder and possession of a weapon during the commission of a violent crime. Do you understand what you're charged with? Yes, I don't understand what the order I don't, I don't come down to Okay. Still clad in his Spartanburg jail jumpsuit, he addressed the court in Anderson, asserting his unfamiliarity with the family involved. I don't know this family, he continued. I'm just as confused as everybody else. Uh, a condition of my bond, or, there is no bond today, but a condition from this day going forward is to have no contact with uh, this family. And no contact means just that, that's no contact in person. Uh, no contact by third party, no contact uh, by any type of social media, uh, anything. Is that clearly understood? Yes, I don't even know them. Just... I understand. In response, one of Janiah's relatives moved to speak, but a companion swiftly intervened, silencing her with a hand over her mouth. Fueled by anger, the young woman stormed out of the courtroom, slamming a wooden gate behind her. The connection between Bruton and Powell the other individual charged in Janiah's murder remains unclear. However, Anderson Police Chief Jim Stewart emphasized the likelihood of someone aiding Powell in reaching Janiah's residence. Someone had to drive him there. Someone had to pick him up, Stewart asserted in an earlier interview. While police have confirmed the use of two weapons, a pistol and a semi-automatic rifle in the shooting, Bruton's arrest warrants do not elaborate on this detail. Furthermore, authorities have yet to disclose the motive behind the attack on Janiah's family home. A circulating Facebook post appearing shortly before Powell's 2019 arrest, purportedly a confession linked to the case, suggesting retaliation for a robbery targeting a relative of Janiah's. However, police have refrained from confirming its authenticity or addressing concerns of potential hacking. Subsequent records indicate that Stephen accepted a plea deal, resulting in a reduced charge of voluntary manslaughter. He was sentenced to 30 years in prison for all four charges, with a projected release date in the year 2046. Regarding Bruton, details surrounding his case remain largely undisclosed. He faced charges of murdering Janiah along with four counts of attempted murder, corresponding to each individual present at the scene. Additionally, his involvement in an unrelated armed robbery charge resulted in another attempted murder charge alongside possession of a weapon during a violent crime. Given the severity of these charges, it appears likely that Bruton will be entangled in the prison justice system for many decades to come. The tragedy surrounding this case raises numerous unresolved questions. What motivated the shooting? What was the connection between 17-year-old Stephen and 21-year-old Bruton? Could steps have been taken to avert this senseless act? And who penned the confession found on Stephen's Facebook page? These inquiries may remain unanswered 
but what's paramount is preserving the memory of little Janiah Scott. She was an innocent victim of an unfathomable crime, robbed of a promising future and boundless positivity at just 11 years old. May she find eternal peace in heaven. What are your thoughts on this heartbreaking case? What lessons have we learned? and what community initiatives could be implemented to prevent such tragedies in the future. Share your insights and comments below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel and stay updated on future cases. Until then, stay safe.